Welcome to my apiary. This next woodworking project is one that uh, is both a great honor to do, um, a great honor to be allowed to do, and uh, one that nobody really wants to do. Um, you, you don't want to have a reason to do this, but given the reason, it's a great honor to be either asked or allowed. I asked if I could do this project, and I was told that that would be a really great idea and it would be appreciated. So the project is to build two burial urns for my parents-in-law. Um, now my father-in-law passed away uh, about a year ago. My mother-in-law is not well and uh, so we expect that her time will be soon. So I thought, you know, I'll build two urns at the same time they will be identical uh, other than the species of wood that I use. Uh, so I'm very thankful, I'm very emotional, and I'm very thankful uh, that the family uh, agreed to allow me to do this. Uh, those are two of the most lovely people who walked the planet, and I didn't get to know them for very many years. Uh, you know, things get cut short, and it's always a regret. But I can't thank them enough for the wonderful job they did raising my wife. Uh, she is such a beautiful person, and uh, they did a really good job. I did thank them for that. So I'll stop talking about that so I can maybe don't get so emotional. What I've done here is... Uh, I've chosen two species of wood and I love working with these two species of wood. So it's a fitting that, uh, you know, I loved my parents-in-law and so that follows through with the species of wood that I chose. This is cherry wood that I'll build mother-in-law's urn. And this is walnut. I don't know how many species of walnut there are. Uh, I hear people call some species black walnut uh, or dark walnut or something. And that, that's, I guess, what this is. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful wood. Um, and, and when it's kind of rough sawn and, and not, not finished everything, you really don't see the beauty in this wood uh, the way it will be when it's finished. This piece of walnut, just look at this. Just look at this. This has got such beautiful grain pattern. A little bit of sapwood on the edges. It's got a nice figure in that end. I don't know if I can incorporate that or not. Um, but uh, this is very stressful for me. I want the finished product to be worthy. And um, I've had to design the plan for construction myself, which I'm not very practiced at that when it comes to furniture and, and whatnot. Uh, it's a little different than designing migratory covers or something like that. So I think I've come up with a design that'll work and I just need to start cutting, cutting lumber. So that's what's going to happen here. I hope you enjoy this build. I know I haven't given you much of an overview of what this box will look like and how it's going to be constructed, but uh, this is kind of what I need to do with the top. The top will be an overall size of 10 and 7 eighths by 6 and a half. And there's one construction detail that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cut that top out and then I'm going to rip it off the front and off the back uh, half an inch this is going to be a half an inch piece off of uh, front and back um, you'll see why uh, if I try to explain it it might just confuse things 
So what I need to do is I need to cut this piece big enough for, uh, for the finish size plus two kerfs, which is a quarter of an inch. So we're looking at six and three quarters. Now we're looking at at least six and three quarters here because I'm still rough cutting. Uh, I'm just trying to get the pieces kind of laid out here. Uh, so I was thinking about this piece for the top. It's a rather nice piece of walnut. And I just need a piece that's at least six and three quarter wide, which this is. So in all good conscience, I'll, I'll cut that at seven. And I just want to rip it to size really, or to rough size, 10 and seven eighths. So I want at least 11 here. So I'll probably, maybe I'll just cut this side of that little knot right there. So I'm gonna go and cross cut this. I get to use the new and improved radial arm saw for the first time. My, my piece is 10 and 7 eighths. I've got this set at 11. That should be fine because uh, there's no more cutting needs to be done on this, uh, this length of this. So cutting it kind of to size now will be okay. Generally, I like to cut everything oversized, get all the pieces kind of ready, and then massage them into exactly the size because you only have to make <clears throat> you only have to make an inaccurate cut once and then you have to adjust everything else to kind of fit uh, woodworking is not about <laughs> it's a lot like beekeeping it's not about getting every piece exactly an inch a quarter or three quarter you know getting it bang on like that you work in those increments to make things easy but when you need to adjust then you the important thing is that it fits and it's square and it's consistent. The actual measurement is not that important. So I've got this set at 11. My red line is not quite 11, so I'll adjust that. I'm going to measure that just in case. For this one, because this one is so wide, uh, I'm going to go another inch. Yeah, no, I'm not. So, okay, so we go from the fence. We've got, we've got 11. Now that ruler agrees that that's 11. So I've got my tape set up right. And I'm going to take the plunge and cut this. This is very stressful for me. This beautiful lumber, it's expensive and time consuming if you do things wrong. And then, you know, I have to go back and spend another day planing lumber. Uh, so here we go. camera can pick it up that's a nice nice pink um, ribbon through the middle of that that's that's actually the pith pith of the tree that's getting near the center of the tree I thought that would make a nice detail for the top of this box Those are my two tops. I think I'm going to switch to this newly sharpened 60 tooth blade. I hope the more closed gullets don't cause too much burning on my cherry wood. What I can do with cherry wood specifically and all of this wood will burn. Cherry is probably the worst. Maple is uh, bad too. And you can see 
uh, even doing that cross cut. A little bit of burning there. It's just caused by heat buildup. The blade is a little dirty. Uh, this wasn't the blade I used for that, but uh, you know, maybe it's not as sharp. Um, you don't you don't keep the wood moving through the blade, so you know that just happens. So this is a sixty tooth. It's called a cabinet maker's cross cut. And that might bite me because it's not as good for rip cuts, which is basically what I'm doing here on this saw. Multiple teeth and the fact that it's freshly sharpened or higher, higher tooth density, higher tooth count, and the fact that it's newly sharpened should work for me. I just have a hard time getting this off. It's kind of hard on the fingers. I have a, a new, this is, a, this is what they call an ATB, alternating top bevel. So the top of each tooth uh, is their, their opposite. This one will be slanted that way and this one will be slanted that way. So it makes a nice chisel cut in the wood. Okay. Change blades, it's always a good practice to calibrate the red line on the fence gauge. Pretty darn close. And I'm doing fine work, I usually do this anyway. <clears throat> I don't just rely on the table saw guide when I'm doing real fine work. And this, these cuts I think are gonna be finished size. One main reason that I'm gonna cut these finished size is this one is just barely big enough to get two pieces. I'm gonna cut that in two and it should yield me two parts. You can always make a test cut in a piece of scrap, measure that. Getting old, so the bifocal on these safety glasses helps with setup. You know, I think that red line is right on the money. That's nice, no burning along there. I need two more of each for the ends. They're five and a half long, so any of this material will do.
I've got my end pieces, side pieces, tops, uh, and there's four pieces for the sides here. I think I've got all this, the parts rough size now. The next step, I believe, the top is going to need the most work. So I want an overall finished width of six and a half here. So I need to cut this at six and uh, three quarter because I have two kerfs. I'm going to measure the kerf on this saw blade. And it is bang on an eighth. So I can rip a half, five and a half and a half and I should be all right. And again, I want to do that in this one piece because these are going to be put back together. You'll see why, but uh, they're going to be put back together and I'd like to hide that uh, seam as best I can. That's kind of why I wanted to choose a piece with a fairly straight grain here. And these are, you know, these pieces are finished pieces. So if they're a little wider than half, they're not exactly half, that's okay. I actually, you know what, I'm going to make that a sixteenth wider. And then when this gets all put back together, uh, then I'll, I'm going to trim that to size. You can see how once I put that together, the seams, you know, mostly disappear. That's what I was going for. The reason I want to do this, and here's a little, layout trick, because I want these to go exactly like this, then I can't get them wrong if I follow my layout lines like that. Okay, the reason I want to do this is I want to mill away a lot of this material in this piece uh, so as to make a, a sort of a rabbit here uh, to, to accept the, to accept the side, the side parts to come up in here. I don't know how to explain it all. <laughs> it works in my head. I have to do this with the walnut as well. So I'll do the same thing. I'll try not to do it wrong. Grain isn't quite as straight on this one, but I think it'll kind of uh, fit together quite well still. I'll just put my little triangles on here. 
that's just pencil that'll that'll all uh, sand off these need to be cut exactly to length which is 10 and 7 eighths I don't know if I want to do it like this it sure makes a nice accurate cut So I believe that what I need to do, I'd like to make the shoulders for this on the table saw. I think they go in there a quarter of an inch. Run a piece of scrap through here so I can check my depth. Okay, from this, you might start to see what I'm doing. I'm going to hollow this out. There's a lot of material to remove, however, uh, you know, dado blade, I think. So I'm going to put that piece back on, and then that's going to give me um, a place to run my, my side panels up against this edge and this edge. Okay, and if that still didn't make sense, just stick with me. It will in a bit. This alternating top bevel blade is not really the right thing for this. However, with the combination of the data blade to clean it up, uh, it'll work. So let's see if I can show you that. Can you see the bottom of that? Uh, so focusing. You see the bottom of that groove I made? It's not flat. So that uh, rip blade I had, that's a, that's a flat top blade. That'll make a, a flat bottom in a groove. An alternating top bevel blade won't. So at very least, I need to clean that up and make it wider because the, the piece of my, my side panel is going to be three quarters of an inch, or it's going to be a quarter of an inch wide. I have a, a, a different idea for that. Maybe I don't need to spend the time and hollow that all out. Okay, what does it say here? Can I do a quarter? Blade, blade. So it says blade, blade is a quarter. So we'll do that. Oh, take my break off. This data blade is not in good shape. Not something I really should be using on fine woodworking. So again, blade blade is supposed to be a quarter of an inch. We'll do that. 
there's almost always multiple ways to do things. If nothing else, it comes down to hand tools. I always tell people if they want to start woodworking, you get yourself a nice router. You can do a lot with a router. Routers are very versatile. And, and that's what I'm thinking for for different way to do this is the router. Because what I need to do is I need to cut a quarter of an inch rabbit uh, in the edge of this. And I have a, a rabbiting router bit that I may be able to use for that problem on the table saw is I don't want to cut all the way through here through the end that's the finished end and I also don't want to uh, make a stop cut on the table saw uh, because first of all it's a little dicey uh, you know you do it and it's safe if you do it right but you've got to be careful plus that blade will make a, a scallop at the end here that then you're using your chisel to clean out. That's not a big deal because if you don't get that chisel work exactly right, that's not a part you're going to see because you're covering that up with that end, end piece there. So the router, uh, I can run the router along here and the router bit will take that out. But again, it'll leave a little scallop at the end here and a scallop here. So then I just clean that up with a chisel. I think I'm going to try to do that. It takes a little bit of setup uh, to, you know, secure the piece down and get the router. Make sure you don't route too far into here. And again, if I do route into here, not a big problem. I don't want to weaken this too much, but no, no big deal because that end piece goes right to the end. Okay. But right now with the dado blade, I'm just wanting to make this wider and flat bottom. I get that exactly half an inch and my my guide on the saw is no good when it comes to the dado blade dado blade is wider and uh the old saws the the motor was on this side and you could do that because this side of the blade is always kind of the same place whereas the new saws the motor is on this side so as you stack the dado blade it gets closer to the fence so that throws your your table or uh, fence guide out of whack. Okay, so that's half, and now I need a quarter of an inch. All right, I'll get my scrap out again. Let's see if that's going to give me what I want. That's perfect in every dimension. That's awesome. Okay. This again. I am risking a little bit of tear out at the end here, uh, but that's not too much of a consideration because again, that'll all be hidden in the end. To avoid that, just run a, a piece behind the workpiece so the tear out happens here and not over there. That's really quite nice. I'm very happy with that.
Here's some trivia. I'm going to make these marks that I drew, I'm going to make them a little darker. And these little marks that I drew, there's a name for them. These little marks are called witness marks. Yeah, witness marks. They witness what's going on. This one's a little bit warped, but I can pull that in with the clamp, I hope. A little bit harder on the maple in the uh, walnut. It's darker. You can buy uh, you can buy white pencils when you work on dark woods. Really helpful. Okay, so now we have to. This is the most complex part. There's one more part that has a little bit of complexity to it, uh, but not in this way. I'm going to get my router set up and we're going to try that. So this is my Lee Valley rabbit set. And if, if you're, a, like I was saying, you get a router if you're woodworking, um, invest in good router bits. They're not cheap, and uh, but they're very flexible for what you can do with router bits. I don't know if you want the number off of that. But what happens here is this set has four different bearings included in the set. Each bearing will give you a different depth of rabbit. And this bearing gives me a 3 8 rabbit. I'm looking for, by all rights, I don't need, uh, I just need a minimum of a quarter of an inch. I can't hold that with my bare hand. I have to hold that real tight to get that little Allen screw out of there. Okay. So one would assume then, one bearing that's a, a little bit bigger than that will give me the quarter inch size. It's a really nice set. Uh, so that's the biggest one in the bag is what I need. So if I were to put this one in, then that gives me, that is going to give me just over a quarter of an inch, which is okay. I just need enough space in there. I don't need it to be bang on a quarter of an inch. That would be nice if it was. Not sure why it's not going to give me that. Now I'm doing this freehand, I think. Uh, if you're running a router table, then you can set the fence on the router table. So the router comes, the bit comes up through the router table like that. And then you set a fence along here that will give you the depth that you want. So you don't have to rely on that bearing. You can just bring your fence up. Um, but here I'm going to rely on the bearing. Okay, I'll put this away and we'll get the router out and set things up. Make sure you don't lose all those bearings in the little, the little wrench. That will come with these nice holders. It's very nice. Okay, here's my trusty router. Oh boy, there's crud all over the platen. Now this is a this is a good old workhorse router. Not that old, but. Uh, it sure is a great router. I don't even think you can buy this one anymore. Um, 
It's a Porter Cable Model 690 LR. It's not a soft start. It's not a variable speed. It just has a good old fashioned on and off switch there. I have two of these. I love them so much because they're just, they're just basic. They don't have a lot of bells and whistles. When I approached this router, it had a quarter inch collet. So this router will accept quarter inch and half inch router bits. So take that one out, put the half inch collet in, don't tighten it. Stick my bit in here. And here's a tip on router bit insertion. Uh, this one's got paint down here. You don't want to get the painted surface in there. You just want to slide it up to there. Some of them don't have a painted surface and you can slide it farther in. The problem is if you bottom that out, uh, you may not be able to see that, but if you bottom that, call it out in there, the transition between the shaft and the face is a curve and your collet is going to tighten on that curve and uh, it's not going to be tight. It's going to come loose on you. That can cause inconvenience, annoyance, or bodily injury. This one doesn't even have a spindle lock. It's just a good old fashioned wrench system. And again, nice and snug. Don't kill yourself on those. And now, how you adjust the depth on this is you just turn it. There's a spiral here and a pin. So line up the pin with the beginning of the spiral. And now we have a problem. The bit doesn't go through the hole. It's not really a problem because we have a larger platen here. Now we just take the screws out of this. Wipe it on your shirt to clean all the dust off it. Don't tighten that up until you get all three in. Clear platen's nice. It, it uh, you know, helps to let the light through so you can see what you're doing. You can kind of see through it, not as well as you might imagine. And again, snug, not crazy. It kind of, I used to teach computer stuff and you can't see my hand, but I would tell my students that, you know, if I, if I see them grabbing a screwdriver like that and I'll give them heck and uh, just grab your screwdriver with your fingers because you can't tighten it nearly as tight like that as you can like that. That's as tight as you want to make it. Just tighten with your fingers, just like that. Okay, so now we do want to set a depth on this so we can do that now. So again, I just turn that and then I can lock that in when my depth is set. What does my depth need to be? My depth needs to be a quarter of an inch. So again, I can lay my little ruler across here, turn this up to a quarter, there we go, quarter, and then lock that in. Okay. Now I did say that this is going to make a, a rabbit that's a little deeper than I want. So I'm going to go a step further. This is a fence that goes on this router and it fits in these holes. So again, if you had a router table, you'd be doing the same kind of a thing. I'm 
It's a nice, uh, it's a nice fence. I'm glad I bought this stuff when I could because I think they're uh, stopped making these. Uh, so you can slide, you can slide the fence along like this and get it really close. Then you can lock this one in and use the fine adjustment to just sneak up on where you need to be. Very nice system. And so what I want to do is I want to measure a quarter of an inch. Uh, yeah, I want a quarter of an inch uh, rabbit here. And this has given me, uh, what is this one? Yeah, this is, this is 5 sixteenths rabbit. It's not quarter inch at all. Okay. So we definitely need to be this way. And that's right about approximately where I need to be. I'll tighten the rear one. And now I can... I'll tighten this one enough to stabilize it so it doesn't wobble. No, I didn't get it approximate. I nailed it. that right down. So this fence also has uh, holes here so you can put a hardwood auxiliary fence on that. You can put a tall fence on it for routing if you wanted to route. Uh, if you wanted to route the end of something like this then uh, a tall fence is handy. I'm not doing that. I'll be routing this like this. And I have to start at mid-cut. I don't want to start at the end. So that's going to be a little dicey. Um, I, can, I can do that. That's, that's a little harder. Like, you can do that. You just, if it's in a router table, you, you start like this and you, you move it in to the bit. You don't want to move it with the rotation. It can catch. I'm not using this in a router table, though. So... When I start the router, then I'll just uh, I'll just move it in like this and cut. But I have to secure this somehow. So that little screw on the bearing uh, does actually protrude below that lumber a little bit. So I just need to be over the edge of the the table here. So my very first power tool, I think my very first power tool was a little jigsaw that my dad gave me. And I, but my very first most favorite power tool was a, was an old Black & Decker router that I got back in the seventies. And oh, did I have fun with that router. I made all kinds of stuff. Is that going to clear that? Yes. Okay, that's pretty good. I don't have to put a lot of pressure on that. Eye protection is a good idea. Find it useful to get down to the same level. I'm going to uh, kind of do a little bit of a test cut in the center here before I start getting over into the end. So that's what's gonna happen. You can see them now we're covered in wood chips. That's a router for you. Uh, depth is, boy, that is just, that's a tiny bit deep. Uh, height, height is perfect. I can back off my, my fence a little bit.
Let's try it again. I'm struggling here a little, keeping, I don't have much, much platen here uh, on the material. I'm struggling keeping the, the router straight and with the vibration of the router, it's difficult to feel when that happens. I think my depth is good now. Oh, I think that's completely acceptable. Three more like that. I went a little too far here. I thought, oh, why don't I just, but then I remembered that you're actually gonna see this from the bottom. Not that it's, you know, gonna be right out in the open, but you are, if you turn it over, you'll see that little divot that I just made. Not what I'm going for. My fence, protrudes down farther than the material so it has to hang over this bench if it uh, was back my fence would run on the would run on the uh, bench instead of the workpiece That rattling you hear is the, is the fence, not the tool. It sounds like the bearings are going out, but I don't think they are. <sighs> the cord keeps getting caught in that. a little notch it's nice I can I can uh, rest the fence on my arm here and you're right I don't get my fingers in there but I have to hold it very tight to the workpiece I'm just covered, getting them in the face. Got my safety glasses on, but still, that's routers. You got a couple thousand dollars, you can buy a Festool router, get that chip extractor stuff, but I don't know anybody's got that kind of money to throw around.
And I believe that will do it. Okay, so maybe a router isn't the greatest idea. No, they still are really great, but this is what happens, especially when you're down with your face in it. I suppose I could have done that without getting my face in it. Well, I've got it up here. I can clean this up a little. Try to make a straight line in line with the rabbit. Sever those fibers. Don't really need much of a mallet for this job. Chisel's not that sharp, but you know, pretty good for this. Okay, so that's good. This one doesn't need that much help. A little scallop on the end there. Okay, and again, none of this is going to be seen. A anything outside these rabbits are going to be seen. But anything in here, this is not going to be seen at all. This one might be a little trickier because it's kind of in a knot area. Be careful with your chisels. Don't cut your fingers. Don't ever get your any part of your body in line with that chisel. Because if your chisel is as sharp as it should be, it'll cut you fast and bad. I guess I could see this end better. interesting doing the same thing on two different species you can really feel the difference in how these woods mill how they work with the hand tools cherries seems to me much softer seems to me a fairly soft hardwood the walnut seems drier. Uh, I think it has a more dense fiber than the cherry wood. Okay, well, I hope that was correct. Why, that's not... I hope that's deep enough. That, that's just like me, you know, I'm trying to get it perfect and I won't get it deep enough. And it doesn't matter if it's deeper, just make it deeper. Well, okay, again, here's, here's a little bit more visual as to what's, what's going on. So this piece should be very much the width of that. I did cut it wide, uh, but it's going to go on here. So now we've got, I can see a little more handwork to do here. Now we've got a rabbit and we've got a dado. So we turn this rabbit into a dado. Well, this is a dado, this is a groove, if you want to get technical. And again, this is the top. So I'm kind of building this upside down because it's going to be the bottom is going to have the lid, which is weird. But so now my sides, I will slot right into this, uh, this dado right right there and and this one i can put that in there and then put that on as long as it goes in far enough which <laughs> i may have messed myself up and i should have just left it deep but we'll go with that and we'll see what happens so it just gives you an idea of what's going on